so I saw this recent uh, video from ProfMTH. Uh, it was uh, you know, where he was responding to some PM he got about how atheists have no morality and stuff. And so he, he said he was going to keep track of the headlines over the past month about Christian preachers. And lo and behold, it shows, shows all these headlines about you know, all these sex scandals that these preachers got into, you know, molesting, molesting children, rape, you know, uh, public indecency, all kinds of hypocritical things, but from people who preach a kind of sexual morality to the public. Um, and the video pissed me off. It, it not, it, well, it wasn't pissed at Prof. MTH. It pissed me off because, you know, I'm, like I said, I've, I've said it before, I identify as, I identify as a Christian, but there's, so, I mean, I, I think any progressive Christian like myself has to recognize that Christianity has a real image problem. And um, it, it gets really frustrating when, you know, so much of what people see of Christianity is, you know, this hateful, um, you know, moralizing, uh, you know, cage, which people, you know, where they, where they try to, you know, keep, uh, where they try to uphold this kind of social order. When I think if you look at, um, you know, if you look at the Gospels, Jesus was overturning the social order. He was, he was not this kind of, uh, you know, con conservative, um, a constricting force that uh, that's often uh, that tends to be the, the sort of public view of of, of uh, Christianity. And I'm reminded of um, Anne Rice. You know, you may know Anne Rice is the uh, author of the uh, Interview with the Vampire series. Um, back in 2005, she had a conversion experience and returned to uh, the Catholic Church, which in which she was raised, and um, you know, became very very religious. Um, then in in 2010 she announced that she was leaving Christianity. But the, the way she put it was actually very, very interesting because it, because it's not about a matter of losing faith. What she said was, uh, quote, in the name of Christ, I refuse to be anti-gay. I refuse to be anti-feminist. I refuse to be anti-artificial birth control. I refuse to be anti-democrat. I refuse to be anti-secular humanism. I refuse to be anti-science. I refuse to be anti-life. In the name of Christ, I quit Christianity and being Christian. Amen. And, you know, there's, you know, kudos to her. I, I can definitely relate to where she's going. All I can say is I wish she would have stayed. I wish she would have stayed and fought for a new, for a, a better, a new, another version of Christianity, a, a kind of Christianity that is accepting of, of others of, with, you know, with different lifestyles, with different, um, you know, th those who, who are in a more um, subordinate uh, position, you know, I wish, you know, a kind of Christian does fight for the underdog, because I think that is in the spirit of what Christ taught. Yeah, and there's so much um, sexual morality that gets preached, you know, this, this sort of purity-based morality. Um, yeah, and, and I think the Marcus Borg, I should points out like there's kind of two traditions of religion, one based on compassion and one, one based on purity. Purity being, you know, that which is sacred and not, not to be contaminated by, you know, impure deeds and impure people. And, the, and the, that isn't unique to Christianity. I mean, go over to India and, you know, sort of traditional Hinduism is full of this kind of obsession with ritual purity and stuff. So, but I, I, but I think that's exactly that you know the way that religion tends to be used by uh, it tends to be co-opted by conservative traditionalists is um, I mean it it's it's natural that they would be they would, uh, be attracted to religion because a religion provides a an anchor to the past for them you know that it's you know, religion becomes synonymous with their culture. And so whatever their culture says about, you know, gays or about, um, you know, women or anything that any is automatically identified with the religion, you know, so, 
Uh, so it's no wonder that you know, they have such these views about um, homosexuality and women and stuff that have been. I mean, you know, the Bible used to be used to uh, uh, to support slavery. Yeah, at the same time, uh, the abolitionists were citing the Bible in their in their fight against slavery. And so I think, you know, um, on the one hand, you know, there's the sort of traditionalist take on on religion, but there's uh, where religion blesses whatever existing prejudices there are in society. But I think also when you come at religion, including Christianity, with fresh eyes then it can be a force of liberation. You know, I mean, when I think about the cross and, and the resurrection, um, what I what I see is that, that Jesus, uh, in, wh in whom God was revealed, was crucified by empire, the forces of empire, the forces of a traditional and, and coercion might and was redeemed by God. This this poor carpenter's son who upset the social order was, you know, uh, he was vindicated by God uh, after being crucified by empire. And I think if you take that approach, an understanding in that context, then it becomes a radical message of liberation. So, you know, I, I think that um, the sort of sexual moralizing, I mean, it, you know, it, it gets so, so much of the blame for it go, gets placed on religion, and it is true that there's a correlation between the two. I, don't, I, I guess I'm contesting the causality of that correlation. I think that um, there's a certain mindset which is both traditionalist, uptight, and controlling, and seeks religion as a way, uh, a, a, as a means of that control. So, you know, I, I think that that's where this kind of sexual moralizing comes from in, in uh, traditional religion. Yeah, and, and you know, I mentioned a lot of that exists, you know, if you go to India, there's that stuff exists in Hinduism, and yet, you find in in America among people who are tr who are attracted to like uh, Ad Advaita Vedanta practice or yoga, you won't find those attitudes among those people because for them it because they don't uh, because they uh, turn to that religion without the cultural baggage that comes with it. So uh, and and that's and I, I think you'll find uh, the similar for um, other cultures like. Um, you know, they say that in America, athe atheists are, uh, worldwide atheists tend to be more intelligent than religious people, or, but also people of other faiths, other than the dominant religion, tend to be more intelligent than people of the dominant religion. That, uh, it's, so in America, Buddhists and Hindus and tend to be smarter than, than Christians. But if you go to Japan, Christians are smarter than Buddhists because they're, you know, because usually they have to come to that faith through some sort of uh, you know personal conversion experience, and so I think there's what that means is they're is they're not taking the lazy road to religion; they're actually um, taking a uh, uh, a a more transformative view of it. Um, and and you know it's. It's not that I, I you know, sometimes I, I wonder about you know, the way that I, I associate with, uh, you know, the uh, sex positive, uh, you know, uh, feminist movements, you know, people like divinity and feminist horror. Um, I wonder if, if it gives the impre people the impression, perhaps, that I have some sort, of, I'm some sort of sexual libertine. And the fact is I'm not. I'm actually more traditionalist, you might assume. I'm... I like the idea of monogamy and marriage and nuclear family. I, I like all these quote unquote traditional family values. I'm, I'm attracted to that, but the, the difference is I don't seek to impose that upon others. You know, I, I don't, I, and I, and I hate the way that traditional marriage is used as a weapon of bigotry. 
because uh, what's right for me isn't what's right for other other people. Um, so, you know, so yeah, I mean, I I think that uh, you know, I've often mentioned the fact that, that Jesus himself hung out with prostitutes, and yeah, I think that his the fact that he purposely chose to hunt, hang out with people who were considered impure by their by their culture says a lot. Um, on a somewhat tangential note, I just want to note the passing of a, of a great man recently. Um, a, a guy named Peter J. Gomes, uh, who died two days ago. He was a preacher, a theologian, a professor at Harvard Divinity School, and he was gay. He announced in 1991 that he was gay and uh, campaigned for acceptance of homosexuality within the church and within society at large. Um, I, just, I just want to say that um, the world lost a great, uh, a great mind recently, and um, want, I want to offer him up as an example of what Christianity can be like. So um, that's it for now. Peace.